The scripture reading is from Luke 24, 27 through 32. And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted them in all the scriptures, the things concerning him. So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He acted as if he were going further, but they urged him strongly saying, stay with us for it is towards the evening and the day is now far spent. So he went to st in to stay with them. When he was at the table, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognized him. He vanished from their sight. They said to each other, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road when he opened to us the scriptures? So I have a question for you this morning, and it's the same thing that I asked the children when they were up here today. If you saw Jesus, would you be able to recognize him? Now you may be thinking to yourself, oh sure, pastor, no problem. He's the guy with the long hair and the beard. He'd be easy to pick out of the crowd. Well, no, that would not be the case these days necessarily. Or this is what Jesus looks like, or that is what Jesus looks like. It would be very easy for us to recognize him. See, I know that we all believe that we would be able to see him if he was walking among us. We think we know exactly what he looks like, and we think we know exactly how he would be acting. But I am not so sure that we would be able to recognize him. At the very least, I do not think it would be as easy as we want to believe that it would be. Now, in our scripture for today, we find exactly that thing happening to the two that are walking to Emmaus. And the two that are walking to Emmaus are Cleopas, who had been a follower of Jesus during his lifetime. Uh, he is named. The other one is not named, though most historians believe uh, that the other person was his wife, Mary. Now, Mary had also been a follower of Jesus, and she was even present at the crucifixion. So it should have been really easy for these two people to recognize Jesus as he was walking with them. However, as they are walking the seven so, uh, or so odd miles from Jerusalem to Emmaus, uh, they are talking with a stranger, but they do not recognize that that stranger is indeed Jesus, having been resurrected. Now we might be saying to ourselves, were they blind? How could they not recognize him? Did he shave his beard or something? Did that throw him off? Well, no, they didn't recognize them because he did not appear to them in the form that they had been accustomed to seeing him in. Or he simply stopped them from being able to recognize him so easily. But as they are talking, he begins to recount all the prophecy that had been fulfilled by his death, burial, and resurrection. You see, these two disciples were so downtrodden at Jesus's uh, crucifixion as and, and they were very upset by this which makes sense but as he's talking to them he recounts and tells them did not these things have to happen in this way and he goes through the prophecies that were told about him and as he's going to leave them they ask him to stay and eat with them and as he blesses the bread and breaks it and gives it to them then he allows them to see that oh yes this is Jesus that was with us he shows them that form and in that moment, he vanishes from being with them. Now, after the fact, Cleopas and Mary probably looked at each other and said, wait a minute, that was Jesus. Oh, how could we have not known that that was him walking with us this whole time? You know, when he was talking to us, did you not feel it in your heart? Did you not feel your heart burning just like it used to when he would talk to us in the past? So we can see that recognizing Jesus may not be as easy as we think it will be. Now, I think we fail to see him in all sorts of things that we do every single day. And I know that I failed to see him in my own life just a few weeks ago. Now, I am a procrastinator by nature. That is not a surprise to any of you, I believe. 
Um, but I have found that when I begin a project, I need to be able to finish that project. Now, I don't mean that I want to do a poor job and just get it done and rush through. What I mean is that once I sit down to do something, I want to give it all of my attention and complete it before I can move on to doing something else. So this Easter, our kids got a new swing set as a gift. And if you've ever had the pleasure of putting together a swing set or something like this, you know that things do not always go as planned. It's very difficult to put anything together when the main tool that you're given to do so is the little Allen wrench. So I spent the better part of my afternoon working on putting all the pieces together. And at a certain point, it became apparent to me that either I am incapable of reading directions correctly, which may be the case, or I was missing a part. So I was unable to finish putting it together. And this absolutely makes my skin crawl to start a project like this and not finish it. I had worked on it for over three hours. I wasn't able to finish. And even worse, I wasn't able to go to the store and get the part that I was missing because there were other obligations that needed to be met that day. Now, as I was working, I had a helper. You see, Alan had decided that he wanted to help me put together the swing set, primarily for his little sisters. Now, this is something that we had done in the past. He had come and helped me, but when he was smaller, he usually helped for a little bit and then he'd run off and go play. And then he'd come back in a little bit and check on the progress and they'd go off and he'd go play again. But that is not what he did this time. He was in it for the long haul this time. And so as I was working with him, we were putting things together and I failed to recognize just what all this meant. You see, I became so focused on getting that swing set built and getting that task done. And I was so upset when I didn't finish it that I failed to see Jesus in this moment. I know that sounds odd, but think of it this way. See, I failed to see the opportunity that I was being given by Jesus to just spend time with my son. I failed to see the chance to simply enjoy being with him, to encourage him in the work that he was doing for his little sisters. I failed in that moment to see it. But do we not do this all the time, brothers and sisters? We tend to focus on getting results, and we tend to focus that the, the, just the end, but not the means as we are working. But when we stop and look around, we can truly find Jesus in those little moments in our lives. See, we must begin to foster a system of gratitude in our own lives. And what I mean by that is this. We have to remember to be thankful for all the things that are great and small. If we can do that, then we will be able to see Jesus in our lives and his guiding hand in our lives. Now, we tend to do well with the big moments, right? We tend to be able, when something great happens, hopefully to stop and say, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Look at the Super Bowl this year. Hopefully, when they win that Super Bowl, someone's going to say, thank you, God, for allowing me to do this. That's a big thing that happens. But we don't always see him in the little things that happen in our lives. And that is what we must do as well in order to foster that gratitude. So in addition to missing Jesus in the little moments, I think we fail to see Jesus in our lives because we're not always looking for him in the right place. So I have another question for you today, and I didn't ask the kids this one today, but my second question for you today is this. Where would you expect to find Jesus if you were going to go look for him? Now, I think the obvious thought here is that we would look for him in the middle of the church, right? Surely that is where we would find Jesus. Well, I am not so sure that that is the case. Now, do not misunderstand me, brothers and sisters. If we were simply looking for the love of Jesus, if we were looking for a community of people that love Jesus and one another, then yes, the church is where we should look. But if we were looking for Jesus himself, I would argue that he would be anywhere other than in the church. When we examine his life and his work, yes, he did spend some time in the synagogue teaching. But he spent so much more of his time with people. He spent the majority of his time with people that were outcast in their society. You see, he was busy 
doing his work. In a little bit, we're going to take communion today. And one of the things that we're going to say in the liturgy of our communion is this. He healed the sick, he fed the hungry, and he ate with sinners. Well, brothers and sisters, that doesn't necessarily sound like he was spending a lot of time sitting in a pew. See, when we think about just the people of the church, we are the 99 sheep. In that parable where the man goes out to find the one that is lost and leaves the 99, well, guess what? Those of us that are in the church already, we are the 99. You see, he's already gathered us, and you know what? We do praise him and thank him for doing so. But there is always that one other sheep that he is going to be, go out, going to be going out to look and get and bring back into the fold. So if we want to find Christ in this world, it becomes necessary for us to be doing the same things that he would be doing. Taking his message to the beaten down, the forgotten, and the ones that our society has deemed as outcasts. You see, I believe in doing so, that is where we can best expect to find Jesus at work. So this week, let us commit ourselves to cultivating gratitude in our own lives. Let us do so that we can see and thank Jesus for all the little things that he is doing in our lives. And let us make sure that we are searching out for him among the lost in the hope that we can help bring them into the fold of the good shepherd as well. My challenge for you this week is this. Every day this week, I want you to simply take time out of your busy schedule and say thank you. Tell Jesus how you saw him in your life this week. Amen.